Halo Infinite just dropped a new roadmap. I'm not only concerned for the game, but also the franchise. Halo Infinite is a game that I really like, but it's struggling. And it's struggling big time, and the news dropped late on a Friday about how the game is going to continue to struggle for at least another six months. So 343, late on a Friday, dropped new information about the Season 3 roadmap. And everybody was all excited because, hey, they're talking about Forge, they're talking about Co-op, they're talking about a bunch of different things, and that means good stuff coming to Halo. But really what they announced is that actually they're delaying everything by at least three months. Now, pull back the curtains here. Season 1 of Halo Infinite was six months in length. Now, typically we're using to like a three month window for a, a battle pass if you will in, in call of duty terms or other game terms and they doubled that and we all kind of thought okay they're doing this for the first one so they can catch up after launch and the next one will get into a regular cycle of every three months well they announced on yesterday i should say on friday that they're doubling the length again so we're only getting one more season this year and officially season three will kick off in november now that's that is a pretty big deal for just many reasons one we all know the story of the lack of content Content during season one and so we're getting new content in season two but we're not getting a ton of it but we're getting some so we should be happy with what we're getting but I gotta tell you we're gonna dive into this and I'm genuinely pretty concerned not only about Halo Infinite but like the Halo brand as a whole so let's just dive in so here is the roadmap that they dropped uh, on us yesterday and transparency is always a good thing so at least we know what to expect or I should say not expect coming here now and you can see very clearly here in the tea leaves or not even the tea leaves the actual images that forge which is something we're all looking forward to everybody's looking forward to forge because that's going to give the game that custom content they don't have to worry about making maps because the community will do it was going to arrive with season two now we knew it wasn't going to arrive initially with the launch of season two because they, they announced that but now we're not going to be able to get access to forge until september as a target so september is the earliest you are going to be able to log into forge and create your maps assuming that it's in a good shape and in a playable state and it actually ships on time so now we're at least waiting until september and that is such a critical part of the halo ecosystem if you will because they could not drop anything else but forge and people would honestly probably be pretty happy because the community would rally together and create those fun game modes that we all know and love that kind of made halo realistically halo now the other thing on this map that i, I am <laughs> that makes me a little concerned here is co-op now we all know when we say co-op, and many of us sitting here listening to this think, I'm sitting on couch seat one and my friend is sitting next to me on the couch and we are off playing Halo Infinite co-op together. If you look at how they actually wrote this, I don't think that's the co-op experience we're going to get. They call it network co-op, meaning I'm thinking that two devices on the same network are going to be able to play together, potentially, I don't know about over Xbox Live, but to me, co-op and network co-op are two separate things. This sounds like just an easier way for them to implement co-op and how to get it out the door, but either way, you're still not getting it until potentially August. So August is what we now have to wait for if you want to play co-op. Now, Mission Replay is another thing that's not coming anytime soon that a lot of us were kind of expecting to drop soon. If you want to go replay a mission, you're waiting until August or you're starting a new campaign. Um, that is that is kind of the only way to, to, to break it down. Is it's, it's not coming until August. And then here's the other thing. So Season 3, like I said, is launching now in a six-month window, which means it's not launching until November. Okay, so they're delaying it till November. But now, when Season 3 starts, you're going to be coming off of a long season, especially a summer season, of not a lot of content. Let's be honest there, not a lot of content. And then Season 3 starts, and it's going to be competing against against Starfield, a, a massive title coming from the Xbox community, it's more than likely going to be competing with a Call of Duty, a potential Warzone 2, and so like it's lining itself up to be launching Season 3 in probably the most competitive month in the gaming industry. So it's just, it's setting itself up for a tough launch window for Season 3. Here's kind of where the concern comes in. If you look at the stats of Halo, 
the online streaming stats, they are bad. Now, this is coming from online sources, and it's not the definitive, but it's pulling data from Twitch. And you can see that the stats coming from streamscharts.com are not great. Uh, in November and December, when Halo launched, there were about 17 million hours watched per month. So that's an average of the two months. In March of 2022, there was 1.8 million hours watched. That is a dramatic cliff, and you can see it there specifically in that bottom chart that it's just things are falling off a cliff and now i would fully expect when season two launches next month that we're going to see some uptick in players um more than likely myself will probably be in there a little bit more because hey they're launching king of the hill they're launching uh the the last wolf standing or <laughs> last spartan standing last wolf standing getting the, the titles there mixed up either way so we are going to see a bump in player count but i don't know how long it's going to last typically most users think of a battle pass as two ish months of content and that looks about like what they're going to be delivering and i it, i don't see how it's going to survive until november at this rate because you're only going to be pulling a subset of people who have already continued to play halo back in with season three i don't think you're going to be pulling in a massive new wave of users into halo infinite which really just kind of lines things up that one year after launch, when season three arrives, roughly one year, I should say, because it's technically, I guess, 11 and a half months, something like that or whatever, we're only going to have two new maps, two new maps in a single year. We're only going to have a couple new game modes. We might have Forge if it launches in September. We might. We will hopefully have co-op. But I realistically think that the game very much should have been delayed another year. And someone's going to call me out and say, but Brad, you like the game when it came out in 2021, in that, in that holiday shopping season. You really enjoyed the game. And you know what? I did. But I also had the anticipation and expectation that we would be getting fresh drops of content and less than a six-month cycle. And so that the content would be refreshed. But they keep talking, uh, prior to launch, it was like Halo Live Services. Everything wants, every gaming company wants to move to the destiny model because they've done it pretty well but halo is doing the exact opposite of the destiny model they are dropping things slowly they're not dropping a lot of content their player base is falling off and i am genuinely concerned about the longevity and health of infinite it's not in a great place right now can they pull it back maybe um no matter what they do they're gonna have to go come back with a very heavy-handed marketing campaign and they're gonna have to be paying streamers the big streamers to get in on the gameplay to really drive some hype back into this game because right now it's starting to feel stale and stagnated and not not just because there's not new content coming but because of the drops being so far spread out i think more than anything else the Delay of an additional three months for season two is is cutting the Achilles heel for Halo Infinite being able to uh, really thrive. I honestly believe that Halo Infinite right now is in a survival mode, just trying to get to that point to where they can be dropping updates. In their blog post, they talk about delivering quality of life updates, and they're trying to find that right balance of delivering content and not crunching their employees, which we totally get and understand. The, 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 the call for help here that I think is being broadcast is that certain affinity is now onboarding to help bring more content frequently, which means that Halo and 343 has decided that they don't have enough resources internally to drop content frequently enough to really make Halo Infinite survive. So they're bringing on outside resources to make that happen. Now that's a good thing if you're a Halo fan, but let's be clear here, that stuff doesn't drop quickly, right? They've got to onboard, they've got to get up to speed, which makes me really just wonder if the sp slip space engine is just a very hard place to develop develop content for right now and maybe they they bit off more than they can chew with what they're trying to do with halo infinite it's really concerning because of the slow rate the, the amount of resources being dumped in because at some point microsoft will look at the financials and i'm sure they probably already have it saying look how much money we're dropping into halo infinite and look at the return that we're getting i can't imagine that they are uh, overly pleased with how halo infinite has going and how and the roadmap of where things are going i mean when you look at these stats this tells the tale while microsoft will not tell us how many people are playing halo infinite this is a good representation of the market um, just from you know a, this is a, a sampling method if you want to get statistical about it the other thing to consider here and this is where <laughs> i'm going to try a little lightly here but let's be honest the last three halo launches 
have not gone well. We've got Halo 5. We know what happened there. The Master Chief Collection uh, launched in a terrible state and came out the door. And Halo Infinite launched in a very rough state. While what we got, the, the little nuggets we got were polished, it was very shallow amount of content. And, and at some point, you wonder just how much more money is Microsoft going to pump into 343 to make Halo Infinite when it's been clear for the last three major launches that the, the, the brand is at risk. I mean, let's... I, I'm a, a, a loyal and diehard Halo fan, but let's be honest, guys. Halo 5 didn't launch well. It wasn't a great title for the franchise. Master Chief Collection was a complete and utter mess. Completely uh, got Microsoft drugged through the mud with that PR. And now we're here back again with Infinite, where we got a very small, slim uh, view of some good content. The overall game, for how much money they have dumped into it, is not returning the investment that I think a lot of gamers were waiting for. We already It was already delayed a year. Can you imagine if this game launched when they intended it would have been even worse. Here we, it's just, it's frustrating from a gamer perspective to want something to be so good and work so well. And you kind of navigated through the corridors of like, okay, we're going to get it delayed a year. It will be good eventually. That's great. And then we say, okay, you know, you, you justify season one is going to be six months. Okay. Then season two, will, things will kick off and it'll start like Halo Infinite is just losing momentum at a staggering rate, and it's hard to understand how they are going to turn this around without dumping just boatloads of more money into Halo, into 343, which honestly, at this point, may not seem all that justifiable from a business perspective. While it, gaming is not all about a numbers perspective, in the world of business, it is. Like, if the game doesn't look like it's going to return on the investment that they put in, at some point, you're just throwing good money after bad. And so I don't think Microsoft is there yet. I think we all believe that the core of Halo Infinite has something. But when is that going to arrive and materialize in something that makes the user feel good and want to be dropping money into microtransactions where they're going to make their money buy additional content? I don't know. I am trying not to be... I don't like doing negative videos and i'm just a more positive person in general but it's very clear that halo infinite is in trouble and they are are, are scrambling to try to make things right but the clock is ticking